2017, the year it all began. It was here that Khaki kicked off with the first ever Khaki event, Khaki is Khaki 1. The event gave people a month to play a collection of 70 impossible maps, with the winner being the player who finished the most of these tracks. The player Joe Hals would go on to win Khaki is Khaki 1, but that's not the story I'm going to tell today. Instead, I would like to focus on one of these tracks in particular, Khaki is Khaki number 58. At first glance, the map doesn't seem particularly special. A high-speed roof hit into a water bounce, followed by a jump to the finish. While it might look basic at first, there's more to this track than meets the eye. And although players didn't know it yet, a legendary shortcut with the potential to save huge amounts of time was laying dormant, hidden in plain sight. But for now, ignorant to the cut's existence, players had no choice but to focus on the normal route. Scattered throughout 58 are numerous tricks players can use to save time, and the first year of the track's world record history saw many small improvements. Maintaining more speed after the landing, a faster end, less air time after the water bounce, etc. As expected, progress gradually slowed down as players like Matt, Joe Hals, and Edge pushed the record closer to perfection. And on the 24th of December, 2018, a player named Exxon set back-to-back -back records, pushing it down to a 10-14, the first truly strong record on the track. This record isn't viewable today, but it was clearly an incredibly good time. The run went on to stand unbeaten for nearly three years, before finally in 2021, the player Clone took it upon himself to push the record lower, his eyes firmly set on a sub 10 second run. Clone had single-handedly managed to bring the record down another 21 hundredths of a second, driving the first sub 10 second run in the track's history. After this flurry of records, 58 was looking incredibly optimized. Clone had pushed every section to the limits of what was possible, and competitors would have to start thinking outside the box if they wanted to take his record down. During these years of hunting on 58, players had long since theorized that a shortcut might be possible on the track. Although the idea originated much earlier, the first known footage of the idea came from X6 in late 2021 when he shared this clip with the community. The shortcut took advantage of a so-called nose bug to reach the finish line from a small grass patch to the left of the track. For whatever reason, when the car is balanced on its nose, if a player holds accelerate, brake, and either left or right, there's a chance the car will get sharply redirected in that direction. The catch is that the exact direction the car flies in is incredibly unpredictable, and in the case of 58, even getting the nose of the car down is already fairly difficult. In the clip, XX managed to execute the nose bug perfectly, setting his car hurtling towards the finish line, but there is one other problem with this shortcut idea. The finish line is facing the wrong way. This made finishing with a nose bug from the side nearly impossible and completely luck-based. Because of all this, nobody really took the shortcut idea seriously, and it was slowly forgotten after even XX moved on from the map. It wouldn't be until April 2022 when someone new decided to give it a shot. Funnily enough, that someone was me. I had stumbled across Exix's fail clip during that April, and having always been fascinated with shortcuts, was surprised to see that nobody had given this one a real shot before. So, for the next few months, I went all in, putting up a huge effort in the hopes of getting that one lucky run. Many of my best attempts came heartbreakingly close, but that pesky finish line rejected nosebug after nosebug. On July 24th, 2022, I booted up the track like any other day, ready to throw attempts at the cut once again, but this session wouldn't last nearly as long as I had expected. On my very first attempt after loading the track, this happened. Finally, after countless hours of trying, I had gotten a nose bug that resulted in a lucky bounce, sending my car tumbling into the finish line. The shortcut dream on 58 was real. After clinching the record, I knew there was more potential to save time off the track, but personally I was content with my run. Later that same year, a player named Safey saw this same room for improvement and began putting up attempts of his own, and on December 9th, Safey got this run.
A few slightly better bounces after the nose bug were all it took to improve the record down to a blazing fast 897, breaking the 9 second barrier for the first time. But this wasn't the only action 58 saw on December 9th. Little did Safey know, but when he claimed the record, another player had been trying the shortcut themselves at the exact same time. Reason. After Safey shared his clip showing off the new world record, the community celebration for this run didn't last for long, as just 23 minutes later, Reason dropped a clip of his own. It was a tiny improvement, but an improvement nonetheless, snatching away Safey's world record within minutes of him achieving it. Unlike Safey's record, Reasons would stand atop the leaderboards for quite a while. That is, until Acer set his sights on 58. Throughout 2023, Acer had been on a dominant tear, claiming world record after world record, eventually working his way to the top of the world record leaderboard, dethroning the khaki legend Simo. In September 2023, 58 became Acer's next target, and it wouldn't take long before his dominance once again became apparent when he drove this run on the track. Acer had finally nailed the dream shortcut, bouncing directly into the finish line without losing any speed. This is where the world record stands today, sitting as another notch on Acer's ever-growing list of khaki achievements. But this shortcut wasn't just a personal victory, it was also a monumental step forward for the khaki community, as discovering new shortcuts on such ancient maps is a rare feat. So with that in mind, you might be surprised to hear that 58 wasn't the only khakiest khaki 1 map to be shortcut for the first time on that night, July 23rd, 2022. But in order to fully appreciate this story, we have to go all the way back to 2020, when a groundbreaking new shortcut first emerged on the map, Khaki number 59. Let's take a look at the map. First, the player needs to flip their car onto its back, performing what's known as a turtle down the hill. Then, they need to clip one of their back wheels into a freewheel block, which shuts off the car's engine for the rest of the run. If done properly, this will flip the car back onto its wheels, hopefully with enough momentum for the car to roll all the way to the finish line. Although seemingly simple, there are yet again plenty of places to optimize the record here. In the first days after the map's release, the record would be improved numerous times, eventually settling at a 12.05 from Matt. In his run, he did the turtle section quickly and efficiently, and managed to keep a ton of speed in the ending, smashing the previous world record by over a second. This run would stand for over a year before, on December 28, 2018, the player Plasterex drove this run. Plasterex had done the turtle section much faster than Matt, taking down the record by over two tenths of a second. This run reigned untouched for the next two and a half years, with no new challengers. And when it finally did get dethroned, it was by none other than Plasterex himself, who had come back to improve his own personal best. Eleven forty-eight, a massive improvement on a world record that had stood unbeaten for almost three years. Plasterex seemed unbeatable on the track, his run standing miles ahead of what anyone else could manage. After his most recent improvement, it would have been safe to assume that it would have stayed atop the leaderboards for quite a while longer, but this wasn't the case. A new challenger had decided to give Plasterex a run for his money on 59, and just a few weeks later, the player Mig got this run. Mig had utilized a brand new strategy, rolling backwards into the finish, which somehow ended up being the fastest end section any player had ever achieved on the track. When watching this record, it's hard to see where any more time is left to be saved. Mig got every section nearly flawlessly, and with the potential time save of the track at an all-time low, this record would unsurprisingly stick around for a while. During Plasterex and Mig's dominance on 59, a different kind of progress was happening in the background. A few members of the community had started theorizing a few potential shortcuts on the track. The first idea came from Poofy, who, all the way back in 2020, shared this clip with the community.
The idea was ambitious, but looked like it might just work. If someone managed to make it over this wall with a lucky enough bounce, they would not only skip the free will section, but would land right next to the finish line. The potential recipe for a new world record. Intrigued by this idea, in March 2022, I decided to give this shortcut a try myself. Unfortunately, reality struck after just a few hours of attempts. The bounce needed to get over the wall was unbelievably high. Another issue was this small outcropping directly above the bounce location, perfectly in the way to stop any good bounces from ever having a chance to make it over. After a few more days of unsuccessful attempts, I abandoned the shortcut idea, leaving MIG's record to continue to stand unfazed. But it wouldn't be long before another idea popped up, actually only three days later. On the 2nd of April, I received a message from someone I'd been working with for quite some time now. Cutterpillar. Our goal wasn't necessarily to find world record viable shortcuts, but instead we were working on a project to find easier strategies new players could use to finish khaki maps for the first time. We had found numerous new strategies together, and on that day, Cutterpillar had stumbled across a brand new way to finish 59. Here's what he found. After climbing the wall next to the start, he ingeniously managed to bug through the floor underneath the start line, landing on the grass below and driving to the finish from the opposite side completely ignoring the original track design. I was shocked when first seeing this, as not only are new cuts on 5-year-old maps a rare commodity, but this was one of the most unique reroutes I had ever seen. Now hyped up from Cutterpillar's find, I immediately jumped on the map to try it myself. I quickly confirmed that it was definitely easier than the normal method of finishing the track, making it a great addition to our project. But how does this pertain to the world record history on the track? The route was awkward and time-consuming, so I began looking for optimizations to see if I could speed it up. Before long, I had stumbled across the missing piece of the puzzle. This. A way to instantly bug through the wall, slashing a huge amount of time off of Cutterpillar's method. All of a sudden, the world record wasn't completely out of reach. There were still a lot of moving parts, a quick wall climb, clean bug through, a landing on the grass that maintained speed, a precise driving to the finish, but I was motivated to give it a shot. It didn't take long before the fast run started rolling in, and on May 1st I achieved the 6th fastest time on 59 with this run. Despite the run looking pretty good from start to finish, it was still four tenths behind MIG's seemingly eternal world record. Over the next few weeks, I continued pushing my personal best lower and lower, slowly but surely closing in on the record. On July 24th, 2022, just past midnight, the very same session after the world's first 58 shortcut record just a few hours earlier, I decided to boot up the next map on the list, 59. After just a few hours of hunting that night, I managed to pull off this run. With this, MIG was finally dethroned after over a year with yet another brand new shortcut. I immediately shared the run with the community, and after calming down after one of the craziest nights of my Trackmania career, I went to sleep. The next day, I woke up to many other players wanting to try the new 58 and 59 shortcuts for themselves, one of which being the player Storm. After seeing the new 59 record, Storm noticed a glaring weakness in my run that he hoped to capitalize on for a potential improvement. While hunting the cut myself, I made the decision to use a slightly slower but more consistent strategy for the start wall climb, allowing for many more bug through attempts. Storm opted for a faster wall climb, but as a result, got many less attempts to the end. However, just two days later, Storm dropped this bombshell of a record. A massive improvement over my run, managing to get a quick start and maintaining his lead throughout the rest of the track. This 1104 is where the world record stands today, it is what I would have said just a few weeks ago, but while writing the script for this video, it bothered me that both my 58 and 59 records had since been beaten. In early January this year, I returned to 59, this time with a vengeance, in the hopes that I could reclaim my record. After taking some time to learn Storm's faster wall climb strategy, it wasn't long before I was back to getting consistently fast runs again, and on the morning of January 9th, I drove this run.
With this record, I not only reclaimed the number one spot, but broke the 11 second barrier on the track, something never done before. This run is still very new, and players like Mig and Redank are actively pushing their personal best lower in an attempt to take it down, so it seems like just a matter of time before this record will go even lower. In the meantime, let's look at another khaki shortcut, one that's been marked in the history books as the biggest khaki shortcut of all time. If saving the most time is the goal, it's a good idea to look for a map that takes a long time to finish. In Khaki, the map that holds the title of longest map is minus 49. On average, this map can take the best players nearly 3 minutes to complete, and after a quick glance at the track, it's not hard to see why. Minus 49 has a start line positioned at the very bottom of a gigantic inverted pyramid, with the finish line at the very top. To climb the pyramid, players need to do a precise trick called an edge bug just before the corner of any given layer to bounce up to the next. There's a total of 14 layers the player needs to climb to make it to the top, with even one mistake potentially leaving the car stuck upside down, forcing the player to restart from the bottom. Minus 49 isn't just difficult, it's a test of patience, making it one of the most grueling and repetitive tracks in Khaki. The very first records on the map reflected this, with record holders taking over 5 minutes to complete it, but slowly and surely, players worked the record down below 4 minutes. The first player to get a time below 3 minutes was Spammy J, nailing all but one layer bounce on his first try. After a few more small optimizations, the world record settled at a 2.26.41, driven by Ixon. In this run, despite failing a layer bounce early on, Ixon was able to clutch out the final longer layers, securing himself a strong world record. This record stood unchallenged for almost a year, until in July 2020, the player Inns booted up the track looking to get a clean run for himself. He took a closer look at the track, wanting to find the ideal path to the finish. Depending on where he chose to bounce, he could calculate where he would end up when he reached the final layers, ideally as close to the finish line as possible. After crafting what he theorized to be the best climbing pattern, he began putting up attempts. On the 1st of July, 2020, In started a run like he would any other, getting his first three bounces first try. Unfortunately, he failed his fourth, but because it was early on in the run, he decided to continue anyway. The tricky part was that now his planned route up the pyramid was thrown off, and he would have to make decisions on the fly for the rest of the run. The rest of his climb went fairly smoothly, but at this point, he had fallen behind world record pace. He was one layer behind Ixon near the end, with just two bounces left. Inns went on to line up for his 12th layer bounce, but something about this one was different. Instead of the normal bounce, this one was bigger. Way bigger. This run, although not without its flaws, was incredibly strong, breaking the world record by over 20 seconds. As it turns out, Inns had been fully aware of the possibility of skipping a layer during his planning, and when he made it to the 12th layer, he knew the Mega Bounce was his only chance at the world record. With incredible decision making and quite a bit of luck, Inns had managed to skip the longest layer on minus 49, securing a record so strong that it would stand for a long time. And I mean a long time. Three years later, Inns' record still stood untouched at the top of the leaderboard, one of Khaki's most widely unchallenged world records. During these years, there were developments to the track, just not by players. Truckmania Tassers, or tool-assisted speedrunners, had been trying to solve the track, looking to create the theoretical perfect run using tools like slow motion, manual input placements, and brute force. The Tasser Delete Club led the charge on Minus 49, fascinated with the track due to the sheer number of possibilities. He was drawn to the challenge of solving this puzzle, which layers he should climb where, what exactly the fastest path up to the finish line really was. In 2021, Delete Club proved that with a miraculous bounce, it was barely possible to skip four layers with a single bounce, opening up even more possibilities for solutions to the tasking of the map. After seeing Delete Club's progress, a few other players began discussing ideas to shave off even more time in the rest of the climb. Ignatol and Nagul began talks of potentially performing a Uber bug, where the game sometimes miscalculates speed loss when crashing into a wall, instead resulting in a significant gain in speed. By using the start line as the potential Uber location, they wanted to use this bug to fly all the way up to the layer where Delete Club's multi-layer skip could then be used. After testing for a while, 
the best Ignatol could find was this Uber, not nearly enough speed to make it to the upper layers. And so, the idea was abandoned, and Minus 49 eventually faded into the background as the Tassers began focusing on other maps in the series. Delete Club, however, wasn't done with Minus 49, returning to the track a year later to finish what he had started. This time, he wanted to tackle the challenge with a fresh perspective. He had a hunch that there might be something more to the track, so he zoomed out, hoping to see the bigger picture. When looking at the entire map, it was hard to ignore the massive roofs on either side of the inverted pyramid, which coincidentally lined up perfectly with the final layer of the track. If a player happened to find themselves on this roof, they could easily drop down to the final layer, and after testing, Delete Club confirmed that climbing up to the roof using the stadium was indeed faster than climbing each layer of the pyramid individually. There was one problem though. The pyramid was built very well. No holes, no ramps, no scenery that could be used to escape, just a start line, a finish line, and 16 layers in between. If Delete Club wanted to make this new stadium strategy work, he would need to think outside the box. So that's what he did. From his previous tasking experience, he knew that when the Trackmania car is stuck in unique positions, weird stuff tends to happen. He zeroed in on the start line and began trying whatever he could think of. And after a little while, seemingly out of nowhere, Delete Club stumbled across this. Using task tools, Delete Club demonstrated that if someone managed to execute this new bug using the start line, the world record was free for the taking. After seeing this, myself and a few others jumped on the track to test the bug ourselves, but quickly had a rude awakening. This bug was way harder than it looked. It had taken Delete Club hours of automatic brute forcing to achieve, and after a few hours of trying, we decided this particular shortcut wasn't feasible for human runs. Over a year would pass without much activity on the leaderboards, the two 26 by ins standing untouched. But in November 2023, another player stumbled across Dilly Club's old videos showcasing the cut. When Zypher saw the shortcut for the first time, he experienced the same feelings many of us had back when it was first discovered. He wanted to give it a try himself. However, unlike us, Zypher didn't give up so quickly. In fact, it wasn't long before Zypher had this groundbreaking attempt. After just a few hours of trying, Zypher had managed to prove that the bug through was indeed humanly viable, but unfortunately the nerves had gotten to him while trying to climb the stadium, causing him to fail the first sign bounce and the record to slip just out of reach. While the shortcut did save a lot of time, Zypher still needed to get the stadium climb first try, else he would end up just a few seconds short. Undeterred, Zypher was even more motivated than before, finally seeing the bug work for him in real runs. Over the next few weeks, Zypher would only grow more consistent with the bug, getting more and more attempts to the stadium but failing the climb each time. It was only a matter of time before the record would fall, and on the 18th of December 2023, Zypher got this attempt. This record not only took down one of the oldest world records in khaki history, but also shaved nearly 40 seconds off of Inn's time, the biggest time save of any shortcut in khaki, solidifying Zypher's run as one for the history books. This is where the record stands today, but if it weren't for Zypher's willingness to believe in the shortcut when others didn't, Inn's 226 might still be standing to this day. In the history of khaki, the same familiar names usually lead the charge in new innovations and world record improvements. Incredibly skilled players like Ignatol, Acer, Simo, and many others can rely on their years of Trackmania experience to make groundbreaking discoveries. And with Tassers like Delete Club constantly looking for creative solutions, very rarely do stones go unturned. So, you can only imagine the community's collective shock when a completely unknown player not only became the first to finish one of the hardest maps in the game, but did so in a way that no one had even considered before. This is the story of Minus 83. The fifth edition of the Khakiest Khaki events took place in early 2020, and with it came Minus 83, a complex multi-trick map built by Lionsgate. 
The track starts with a jump off a quarter pipe, aiming to hit a sign just right to flip the car over the edge, requiring a precise landing on a blue wall on the other side. After a jump to the upper area of the track, follows a difficult spider bug using the wall, which leads to a bounce off a tiny ledge to land on a white platform. If all this goes well, all that's left is to jump to the finish, using a pipe to get a bit extra distance, finishing out the run in just under a minute. Immediately upon release, Lionsgate uploaded a replay of his minus 83 finish for the public to watch and learn from, meaning it was no secret how players were intended to finish this track. However, due to how complex and difficult it was to string all these tricks together, the map remained unfinished for over a week, despite many talented players trying their hand at it. Khaki frontrunners like Simo, Virtual, and Mig were among those expected to be the first finisher, but on March 7th, a brand new face would upload the first community replay on the track. It wouldn't take long for the community to catch wind of this, and immediately the replay started raising eyebrows. Who was this nobody person, and why was their run almost 6 minutes long? Naturally, people rushed to download the replay to check it out for themselves, and when they finally saw what nobody did in their run, they couldn't believe their eyes. This is what they saw. Instead of going for the sign hit at the start, nobody jumped below the sign onto this small blue path, already completely ignoring the intended route. They dropped down to an underbelly section of the track, where they just so happened to stumble across a ramp, likely placed there as a bit of scenery by the mapper. Nobody used this ramp to jump into another small corner of the map, and this is where the replay started getting weird. For the next three and a half minutes, viewers got more and more confused, as nobody seemed to just be messing around. Bumping into walls, driving aimlessly, it really seemed like nobody was just on a joyride with no clear goal at all. After a bit, they managed to flip their car upside down, wedging themselves between an antenna and the wall. The car sat here for a few seconds, before something peculiar started to happen. They seemed to be glitching, bugging back and forth in erratic movements. Suddenly, like magic, nobody's car lifted into the air, popped through the wall, and dropped to the ground on the other side. After finding their bearings, nobody slowly turned their car around to find the finish line standing right in front of them. After a few awkward drifts over the anti-boosters, nobody locked in one of the most peculiar runs in Khaki history. In the five years that nobody has been a part of the Khaki's Khaki Discord server, the only time they ever surfaced was to share this run. No explanation, no begging for attention, just shared their find and hasn't been heard from since. After this hilarious and frankly weird turn of events, players jumped on the map to try it themselves, and quickly realized that nobody's method was not only much easier to pull off than the intended way, but could be much faster than Lionsgate's original run. The record was broken many times in the days that followed, and on March 10th, 2020, Ignatul drove this run on minus 83. Although players didn't realize it at the time, this run would go on to be untouchable for over two years, a rare feat considering the route had been discovered just days before. During this stretch, nobody's shortcut route became completely mainstream on the track. If you were a new player looking to finish minus 83, why bother with the nearly impossible intended way when an easier and faster route was sitting at your fingertips? It wasn't until November 2022 that Simo decided to revisit the track. It had dawned on him that amidst all the shortcut hype, no one had really given the intended way a fair shot. So that's what Simo did. And lo and behold, on November 5th, Simo dropped this time on the leaderboards. Simo had managed to take down a two and a half year old shortcut record using the original route Lionsgate had intended all those years ago. As it turned out, the shortcut route the player Nobody discovered all the way back in 2020 wasn't a shortcut after all, just a slightly slower alternative way to finish minus 83. 
But what about when a shortcut is so undeniably fast that it renders nearly the entire track useless? Well, in that case, there's no better example than minus 51, where players notice the potential for a huge shortcut on day one. But let's first take a look at the map's intended route. First, the player jumps into a downhill leading to a jump, where the player rotates into the nosebug position. After nosebugging up the quarter pipe, the player lands on a platform, takes speed, and then does a series of precise jumps backwards across the map. The car eventually settles at the very back of the track, before the player jumps into another downhill, jumps over the entire map into the exact same ramp from the beginning, before nosebugging again, this time to the left, into the finish. Those who have some Trek Mini experience might have already noticed the potential shortcut, as did many during the first days after Minus 51's release. The track design is inherently incredibly inefficient, forcing players to drive sections multiple times with no checkpoints along the path to make this driving mandatory. So, instead of nosebugging up the quarter pipe at the start, people started asking the question, what's stopping us from nosebugging directly to the finish? Well, the short answer is a lack of speed. The entire reason the mapper built a path behind the start line was because it resulted in much more speed for the nosebug the second time around. Without this extra speed, players quickly realized that it was impossible to reach the road for the nosebug to the finish, and even from the quarter pipe, attempts came nowhere close. So, after literally coming up short after trying, record hunters opted to use the intended route. The record was quickly improved in the first days by players like Hefest, Techie, and Inns, all skilled veterans in the Trackmania hunting scene, especially in Khaki. In Inns' record, he was the first to utilize the risky strategy of not taking speed after the landing, managing to slash over 3 seconds off the record. A year later, the player Splinter stepped into the spotlight, able to overtake Inns in the turnaround section and holding his lead to the finish. Fast forward another year, and Link would become the first player to achieve a sub-45 second run, just barely taking down Splinter's record by carrying slightly better speed throughout the backward section. But this record didn't stand for long, and just over a week later, Acer was hunting the map and stunned the community with this run. Forty-four fifty, a monumental time on the track, crushing Link's record by almost half a second and solidifying a dominant run at the top of the leaderboard. During these years, while most players were pushing the intended route to its limit, a small handful of players still believed the direct nosebug strategy was somehow possible. All the way back in March 2020, the player Plasterex had been trying the shortcut on his live stream when he got this attempt. That's what I'm talking about. That's the way to go. That's what we want to achieve here. Plasterex nosebugged left off the quarter pipe and used the road edge to bounce higher than normal, resulting in a much better attempt. This new road bounce strategy sparked the interest of another talented player, Clone. Seeing this fail from Plasterex inspired Clone to give the shortcut a try himself, believing a marginally bigger bounce could potentially send the car to the finish line. Even after getting countless heartbreakingly close fails, the finish line continued to seem just out of reach. Clone's motivation on minus 51 slowly died off after not making any progress for so long. But the next year, in 2021, Clone finally teamed up with the Trekmania Tasser E-Girl to prove that the cut was at least possible in theory. By replaying precise inputs and tediously brute forcing the nosebug, the duo finally showed a glimpse of what a successful shortcut run on minus 51 might look like. Even in the TAS run, the car barely reached the finish road, and after the community saw just how hard the cut actually was, nearly everyone gave up on it. This allowed Acer's record to stay atop the leaderboards for the rest of 2022 unchallenged, and the shortcut idea slowly faded into obscurity. 2022 came and went, but in February 2023, a newcomer would stumble across Minus 51 for the first time on an online server, completely oblivious to the old shortcut idea, Philip. 
Philip happened to see someone in the server mention the shortcut in passing, and after watching the task run, was inspired to give it a shot. Only after hours of trying did Philip finally start getting half-decent attempts, but they were still nowhere near as close as Clone had gotten all those years ago. However, instead of leaving Minus 51 behind, there was something about this nose bug that Philip just couldn't let go. He was hooked. Over the next few days, Philip spent every second he could attempting the shortcut, and before long, the attempts started getting closer. During his hunt, he stumbled across a slightly different strategy where he would get one small nose bug on the quarter pipe leading to a second on the road, resulting in even more promising attempts. And then, on the fateful afternoon of the 24th of February 2023, in Philip's own words, he finally got it. Philip executed the double nosebug strategy perfectly, using the road border as a ramp to send his car flying to the finish. With this run, Philip became the only player in history to shortcut minus 51, saving over 33 seconds and achieving a 74% time save percentage, the biggest of any khaki shortcut in history. Today, Philip still stands alone, at the top of one of the most ridiculous looking leaderboards in Trackmania. Back in 2021, when Clone and E-Girl first tasked the Minus 51 idea, it actually contributed to the larger Khaki Task Project, where the end goal was 476 tasks for the 476 Khaki Maps. As hundreds of these tool-assisted runs flooded the scene, Khaki Tassers were leading the way in making groundbreaking new discoveries about Trackmania itself. It was Khaki Tassers who were the first to discover the now infamous Nose Boost bug, arguably the most revolutionary discovery in Trackmania's history. A few years later, Ignatil stumbled across another game-breaking bug while tassing, and while not nearly as versatile as Nose Boosting, it would go on to pave the path for multiple Khaki World Records to be obliterated. Without diving too far into the weeds, here's a quick explanation of what Ignatil found. In Trackmania, mappers have the ability to stack different blocks on top of one another. They'll do this in various scenarios, one being a technique called overmixing the start of their maps. If the mapper stacks blocks on top of the start spawn location, when the car tries to spawn, it will get pushed away from the overlapping section to the nearest open area. This can make for some creative and interesting beginnings of maps, but creates issues for tassers. As it turns out, these overmixed starts are the only time that Trekmania isn't deterministic, meaning each spawn is slightly different and completely random, making tassing seemingly impossible because they can't replay their inputs and expect the same result. Thankfully, after Ignatol did some more investigating, he figured out that if he let the car spawn like normal, then respawned back to the start without resetting the run as a whole, then for whatever reason, this second spawn was the same every time. With this peculiar workaround, tassers could finally create their runs on these maps. But how does all this pertain to real-life records? Well, while fishing around, Ignatol also realized that depending on the nature of the overmixed start, the second spawn could sometimes leave the car in unintended locations, leading to, you guessed it, potential shortcuts. Ignatol was the first player able to take advantage of this in a TAS run of minus 68, where he managed to skip nearly the entire map by respawning to a location he wasn't intended to, bugging through a wall and driving directly to the finish, skipping the majority of the track. Not long after, he was able to pull this off in a real run, claiming the world record on the track and proving the bug viable for human runs. Yet, despite its potential, this shortcut technique didn't gain widespread attention in the community. An incredibly unlikely set of stars had to align to make this scenario work, and specific server settings needed to be enabled to make respawning a second time possible, making the shortcut less than ideal for the average player. For an entire year, Ignatol stood as the only player to take advantage of respawn strats to achieve a world record in Trackmania. It wasn't until late 2022 where he decided it was finally time to find another map where this was possible, and he quickly locked onto minus 7 as his next target. On minus 7, the mapper used overmixing to bug the car down below the start into a small downhill. Then, there's a tricky climb up a ledge and a precise zigzag section with a freewheel block, forcing the player to dodge the obstacles to keep enough speed for the rest of the map. If the player survives all this, all they have left is to use a ramp to grab the bug fin, finishing the track. 
Because there are no checkpoints anywhere to be found, the track is miserably inefficient, requiring nearly 20 seconds of driving just to arrive right back at the finish line, placed directly next to the start line. Remember this detail, it'll be incredibly important later on in the story. Minus 7 became optimized very quickly after release, mostly thanks to the efforts of a single player, Techie. Techie took a particular liking to the track, having always been a fan of overwalls, a skill that translated perfectly to the climb at the start. Although not much footage of these improvements exists, we know that most of the time was saved by getting faster and cleaner climbs, as the rest of the track is fairly linear. After bringing the record all the way down to a 1447, the torch passed to Afi for a little over a week before Riolu set an incredibly strong 1420 on the track. Although Riolu has since been exposed as being one of the most prolific cheaters in Trackmania history, thankfully, in the case of this record specifically, we know it wasn't cheated because he drove it on stream with the input display display active, and there is nothing suspicious about his inputs during this run. He got a fast climb and wasted no time navigating through the zigzag section, able to close out a run that would go on to remain unbeaten for the next two years. Finally, on July 2021, the infamous khaki hunter Mig would begin hunting the track for himself, and he managed to do this. By the skin of his teeth, Mig surpassed Riolu's time, claiming the world record for himself. It was clear that this record wasn't going to see any significant improvements for a while, especially after seeing how thin the margin of error was after Mig's new record. And so, the record stood untouched for over a year, with little to no activity on the leaderboards whatsoever. That was until Ignatil remembered that Minus 7 has an overmixed start. In November 2022, Ignatol jumped on the track and tested to see what would happen if he respawned back to the start a second time. At first, it didn't look like much, but after a few precise inputs, he realized he could bug the front two wheels up through the roof instead of bugging down as usual. After seeing this, he theorized that it could be faster to bug completely through the roof, jump down to the road before the finish, and then grab the bug fin like usual, cutting out a significant portion of the track. So, excited to try it out, he grabbed a few other players and jumped on a server to give it a shot. As it turns out, Ignatol had done it again. Not only that, mere minutes after players began attempts on the shortcut, they stumbled across a huge optimization. Instead of bugging up through the road, if they kept the car halfway bugged and slowly rotated around, they could bug back down below the roof and reverse directly into the finish, taking the route from 14.19 seconds of inefficient driving to a potential sub 10 second run using the most efficient path possible directly to the finish. The first player to pull this off was Sonics claiming a new record of 13.35. This run isn't viewable today, but Obra came to the rescue by crushing this time with a 10.32 not even a minute later. The record continued to plummet in the following few hours, and when the dust finally settled, this was the run that was left standing on top. Surprisingly, my day one world record would stand unbeaten for much longer than I expected, lasting all the way until late February 2023 when two new players would take to the track looking to push the record even lower. Within a span of three hours, Ekla and Firefighter both managed to beat my time, shattering the seven second barrier on the track and bringing the record down to just over half of the old intended route world record. Ekla still stands as the record holder today, reigning as the fastest to drive one of the most efficient reroutes in Khaki history. Last but most certainly not least, there's Khaki number 206, home to one of the greatest shortcut world record battles in the history of Khaki. Before we jump into the shortcutting, let's look at the intended way. Players start by falling through a hole, all the way down to a tiny ramp, flipping to climb over the edge of the road. After this, all that stands between players and the finish line is a precise jump and a flip down into a quarter pipe, hopefully keeping enough speed to jump to the finish. Unlike previous maps, on the very first day, players had already figured out a way to skip the majority of the track, with Naru being the first to use the skip. Naru jumped down behind the start line, landing on a road section right above the end quarter pipe. 
With a precise wheel hook, Nairu flipped over the road border and into the quarter pipe, keeping enough speed to cruise to the finish. However, this was not fast enough for a world record on the track, as the mapper Yumol had already held the crown with a 2160 using the intended route driven before the map's official release. Over the next few days, many other players used Nauru's route, as it was much easier than the intended way of driving 206. Eventually, they got fast enough with the shortcut to beat Yumol's record, but Yumol wasn't going to let go of his intended route so easily, and on January 2nd, he set this record on the track. With this run, he established a formidable benchmark for anyone looking to use the shortcut for a world record, setting a new fastest time by over 2 seconds using the intended route. This run would stand for the next 6 days before the inevitable shortcut record finally took Yumol down. On January 8th, Nixion became the first to set a really strong shortcut time on the track. Nixion wasted close to no time anywhere in his run, immediately backing up over the edge after landing and getting a clean flip into the quarter pipe. This record stood at the top for 9 days before Kia took the top spot, squeezing out a few fractions of a second throughout the run. Not long after this, a new player would join the battle, Hefest. Hefest marked his debut on the track with a new world record of 1526 on January 21st, optimizing the route to near perfection. I wasn't able to get the replay for this run, but unfortunately for Hefest, Simo came in just a little while later with a small optimization to the route. Instead of landing on his wheels, he realized that if he allowed the car to rotate 180 degrees to bounce on its roof, it would send him directly into the prime position to flip over the border. After this, it's safe to say that Hefest took this personally. After this flurry of records, Hefest had pushed the time to beat all the way down to a 14.93. When comparing this run with early shortcut runs, it was hard to see where players could improve further at this point. This record was solid, standing unchallenged for the next 7 months, a true testament to its strength. Fast forward to September 10th, 2022, and Simo had finally returned to 206 to reclaim what was once his. The resulting run? This masterpiece. Somehow, Simo had managed to squeeze yet another hundredth out of Hefest's incredibly optimized record. Clearly this map was nearing its limit. Improvements were getting smaller and smaller. Surely Simo's record would stand for a while, right? Well, Ignatil had been hunting 206 alongside Simo, and somehow the duo still saw time to save. Just a little while later, Ignatil achieved a 1487 on the track, with slightly cleaner driving, edging Simo out of the top spot with the biggest single run improvement the track had seen in almost a year. Simo, not to be undone, returned to the track just a few hours later to squeeze out another 200ths, but Ignatil wasn't going to let it go that easily. After seeing this run, Simo knew it was strong. How on earth was he meant to beat this? Ignatil had done everything nearly flawlessly. Simo went back to the track, this time to look closer and see if he had missed anything in all his time hunting. Upon further inspection, he realized that because of the way the track was designed, there were really only two steps needed to finish 206. First, get to the quarter pipe as quickly as possible. This is where the shortcut saved the most time over the intended way, as it took a much more direct path. The next step was to enter the quarter pipe as cleanly as possible, enough to maintain speed to jump to the finish. This is where the flip in both strats helped tremendously. While brainstorming, Simo remembered an old idea from the early days of the map, originally shared by the player Goa, who theorized it might be possible to drive backwards and fall directly into the quarter pipe. Although very efficient, the angle needed to land the quarter pipe was incredibly precise, barely possible if at all. For this reason, Goa's idea had never been taken too seriously. Nevertheless, Simo knew Goa was on the right track, so he continued looking for faster ways to get to that quarter pipe. 
It would take just one day after Ignatol achieved his 1480 on the track for Simo to upload this bombshell of a run to the leaderboards. A groundbreaking new shortcut, taking the most efficient pass to the quarter pipe yet, shaving nearly a second off a record that had been meticulously optimized over the past year. And yet, Simo wasn't done on 206. He had saved time in step one, but his entry to the quarter pipe, step two, could still be improved. So he continued attempts, and two days later, on October 22nd, 2022, Simo achieved this world record on 206. Twelve point six nine, another one and a half seconds saved. What had started as a quest to squeeze out the tiniest of time margins using a shortcut found on day one had essentially transformed into Simo's personal playground, with him absolutely dominating the competition. This revolutionary shortcut time is where the record sits today, still alone at the top of the leaderboards with no one else even coming close to touching it. Khaki maps have a reputation of being some of the toughest challenges in Trackmania, but this hasn't stopped players from pushing even these tracks to the absolute limits of what's possible. Trackmania players have a special way of taking seemingly innocent tracks and turning them on their heads, resulting in some of the most impressive and creative records the game has ever seen. This has been the history of Khaki's greatest shortcuts. I hope you enjoyed. If you'd like to see more videos like these, feel free to subscribe to get notified the next time I publish a video. If you would like to directly support the work I do, go check out my Patreon page. There, you can join these wonderful individuals who are actively contributing to the creation of these videos and can get a sneak peek into the behind the scenes of each documentary. Also, don't forget to join the Discord server, link in description. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching until the end, and until next time, see ya.